Good guy, that Mike Garofalo. He's your friend and mine. He joins us every week from the NFL Network. It's our good friend, Mike Garofalo. Mike, you have reported, because you are a stellar NFL reporter, you have reported that Jim Harbaugh is in Los Angeles again to meet with the Chargers. Is it closer to a when and not an if he'll be named the new head coach in L.A.? It's feeling that way uh, every time you talk to folks in and around the situation, you start to get the sense this could happen at any moment now. And the fact that Harbaugh took his second meeting with the Chargers, who seemed like the perfect fit for him out of all the teams right now that had vacancies, and the fact that we got the sense that the Chargers were more excited about him than some other teams. This is a team that is ready built to win right now, and it comes complete with a quarterback that could really use the finer touch uh, that Jim Harbaugh has shown for offenses and quarterbacks throughout his head coaching career. Now he'll obviously hire an offensive coordinator as well. Greg Roman was his guy uh, for a few years in San Francisco. So uh, we'll, we'll see about the staffing. But that's really what the conversation is about now with the Chargers. It's staffing. It's who's going to wind up being the general manager. Remember, that position is open, and they want to make it someone who's going to fit well with Harbaugh. You just look at their candidate list, Ed Dodds from the Colts is one of the guys that does have uh, a connection to Harbaugh that is on the list and is one of the leading contenders for that job as well. So uh, it's feeling like, yeah, when and not if. And uh, I, I had a few people say, hey, if it's not going to happen late on Tuesday, look for it potentially early on Wednesday. So we're holding vigil here right now for Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers thinking it could come at any moment. So, Mike. After the Titans made their move, they hired Brian Callahan away for the Bengals earlier this week. We have four other coaching vacancies around the league. How close are we to finding out who will fill those positions for the Falcons, the Panthers, the Commanders, and the Seattle Seahawks? Well, we could still have a little bit of time to go here because we've got some candidates that are currently uh, in the postseason and going to play in the championship round. So, Next week, win or lose, will be the chance where they can then conduct their second interviews. Ben Johnson, the Lions offensive coordinator, foremost amongst those candidates. This is the guy that we said all along was the hot candidate and would have multiple options for where he wanted to land. We've connected him with Adam Peters, who is now the general manager with the Washington Commanders. So still would not be surprised if Ben Johnson winds up as the next head coach of the Commanders. You've got the Falcons, who have talked to... Bill Belichick multiple times and yet still haven't pulled the trigger and had Raheem Morris uh, in on Tuesday to talk to him for a second time, the Rams defensive coordinator. So they're still doing a thorough search and they've behind the scenes been telling us, cool your jets on the Belichick stuff. There's no real favorite right now and this is going to be a long and thorough search. So they are carrying through on that one, certainly. Then you go out to the Seahawks. Remember, they got a bit of a late start. Pete Carroll for a couple of days trying to figure out what Uh, They were going to do there, and they eventually make the move. Uh, And we knew it was going to be a thorough search, despite the fact that Dan Quinn from the Cowboys, the former Seahawks uh, defensive coordinator, we thought he'd be the leading candidate. We still put him up there at at that point. So uh, the Seahawks could wind up taking some more time. Who did I miss? Who's the fourth team that I didn't name there? Falcons, Commanders, uh, uh, Seahawks. And, of course, the uh, Panthers. 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 Oh, listen, the Panthers. Listen, uh, it's a good job. It's a great place to live. But a lot of folks looking at the David Tepper situation saying, Mm -hmm. hey, that's a meddlesome owner. Frank Reich ran into that last year. Now they just uh, got their general manager in Dan Morgan, who they think highly of the former uh, Panthers linebacker. So that's going to help with the appeal of the job because a lot of people around the league uh, like what they uh, hear from Dan Morgan and like what they have uh, seen as they've interacted with him before. So we could have a Panthers decision some point uh, in the near future. Mike McDonald uh, from the Ravens. If he doesn't get a job, I'm telling you, they're going to be doing cartwheels in Baltimore. The defensive coordinator, uh, they they think extremely highly of him. If he was an offensive coach, Jay, he'd be hotter than Ben Johnson with regard to the interest in him. It's just, you know how it works with defensive coaches in this league. Uh, Let's... Let's talk about the upcoming games this weekend. We've got the conference championships, Niners and Lions in the NFC, Ravens and Chiefs in the AFC. What are you personally most excited about, Mike, when it comes to these matchups? Yeah, I want to see Jared Goff play well outdoors, right? I mean, that's going to be the storyline here. He's played so well uh, at home in Detroit. Now get back out on the road in a tough environment. It's going to be nice weather, apparently, but you're going up against a really tough defense on a natural turf field. Outdoors, Jerry Goff 
Got to play well in that. And then do the 49ers get Debo Samuel? I know he wants to play. Uh, that is without question. He's going to push as hard as he possibly can. And, you know, a lot of times we talk about an injury early in the season and say, oh, this guy's going to sit out the game. But if it was the NFC Championship, he would play. Well, it's the NFC Championship for Debo Samuel. So let's see <laughs> if he can get uh, going with that shoulder. I expect him to be extremely limited, if not practicing uh, or, or not practicing at all, to start the week for the 49ers. But they'll see how he goes throughout the week. It's about 50-50 now from what I gather. Then you flip over to the AFC. I mean, Patrick Mahomes thrived off of being the road underdog going into Buffalo. Going to get that again. You saw Mahomes at the end of the game waving as he was walking off the field following the victory. So can the Chiefs play that underdog card one more time? And how can they deal with a raucous environment in Baltimore? Look, I, I just think, Jay, the Ravens are the best team in the mm. league right now. They showed it on Christmas Day against the 49ers. They have beaten upper echelon teams. They've not just beaten the teams you're supposed to beat. Uh, this is a team that is tested right now. It's the best Lamar Jackson I think I've ever seen, even better than his first MVP year where his league, uh, where his uh, numbers were much better. The way that he's playing, the way that he's, he's conducting himself, to me, the Ravens win this game. Listen, I'm all for the Ravens winning the game, Mike. I, I could do with a little less John Harbaugh post-game dancing in the locker room yeah. because we really, we I mean, we really got to work on it. There's no chance of dancing with the stars anytime soon. I don't think, anyway. I, I wouldn't think so. These head coaches don't have much time on their hands. Thank goodness in this case because nobody wants to see that, Jay. No. But everybody wants to see this guy, Mike Garofolo from the NFL Network. You're the best. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thank you, pal.